you will need to decide whether you are going to listen to the testimony of John the Baptist. And here's what's at stake. Look at verse 33. John said, I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize, that's God, he who sent me to baptize said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Spirit. The testimony of John is not based on what he knows about Jesus. It's based on what God told him to say about Jesus. And therefore, what's at stake in the decision you will make now as to whether to listen to John's testimony is whether you will listen to God. Of course, you, you don't have to believe that. But if you're not going to believe it, that John speaks for Jesus, you should base that choice on understanding and not on ignorance. Shouldn't you? And therefore, we need to pay attention to what John says so that we can render a wise judgment as to whether we will believe what he says is the word of God or not. And therefore, both in this service and next week, we will focus our attention on the testimony of John the Baptist, which is the testimony of God to his son. Let's pray. So, Father, I pray for right, true, wise, informed decisions to be rendered concerning whether we will believe John or not. If any came totally oblivious to what John testifies concerning the one whom he saw, grant that they would learn rightly now so that they might know and Form a right judgment with your help concerning these things. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. John the Baptist appears at the beginning of the Gospel of John and the beginning of every other Gospel in the New Testament. And then he falls into the background relatively quickly. And the reason is because John the Baptist is a link or a bridge between the Old Testament and the New. He's like a a root of a tree. And the tree is the New Testament flowering into the New Covenant and the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the coming of the Messiah and the death of the Son of God for sins and the rising from the dead. All this glorious tree that's going to grow up in the New Testament. John is like one of these, if you've ever seen a big tree that's got roots that go out and then down and maybe five or six feet out from the tree there's a big knob that comes up and then goes down. John's like that. He's here, he's visible, he's part of the tree. You know he's part of the tree. You can see him, he's walking around. But he's a root that went back down into the Old Testament. He's like a a prophet like Elijah. Leather skins, the other gospels tell us, eight grasshoppers, weird Elijah type. And he says he's a voice now saying to those, while the tree is coming up, look at the tree. So John is a bridge. That's why he appears so quickly, and he's gone. His death isn't even reported in the Gospel of of John. He's just here with a magnificent testimony. And then he's gone because things are changing. We need new wineskins. And he's coming. One of the purposes of John the Baptist's ministry is to make sure that nobody confuses him with Jesus or the Messiah, Jesus, or the prophet, 
or Elijah reincarnate. What he does is get a running start in verses 6 through 8, another bound in verse 15, and then he launches in verses 19 and following. And he launches with three amazing testimonies about Jesus. And that's what we're going to look at in this service. Number one, verse 23. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now that's a quote from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5, which goes like this. Read you from Isaiah because it's so relevant. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word Lord in Isaiah 40, 3 through 5, is all caps in the ESV. You've noticed that as you read your Old Testament. Sometimes the word Lord is all caps, and sometimes it's lowercase with a big L at the front. It's because there are these different Hebrew words that are very difficult to translate. Whenever you see it all caps, it's the proper name for the covenant God of Israel, Yahweh, the creator God, the sustainer of the universe, the one who made covenant with Abraham. This is Yahweh or Jehovah. And John quotes that about Jesus. So this is the first amazing testimony. I am the voice. I am the voice prophesied in Isaiah. Make straight the way of L-O-R-D, the Lord. There he is. This is not surprising to us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. What else would you call him? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Yahweh, come in the flesh. That's number one. Number two. When they ask him why he's baptizing, verse 26 is his answer. I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Now our focus next week, Lord willing, will be on baptism with water and baptism in the Holy Spirit. What is the meaning of those terms? That's where we're going next week, Lord willing. But here, his answer of why he's baptizing is not to say anything about his baptism, is it? Verse 26, I baptize with water. Among you stands one you don't know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I'm not worthy to untie. So what's what's his answer? Why are you baptizing? And his answer is, there's one in your midst. And he is so magnificent, so superior to me, so high above me in every regard that I am not worthy to untie his shoe. That's why I'm baptizing. It's all about him. The the point is, it's not about me. Stop asking questions about me, prophet, Elijah, 